and a cyclone is going to be uh, Lena's going to be getting a cyclone. I'm really liking these liking these item choices by LGD. They're tipping the scales even further in their favor, really making good use of these um, hero kills. What I think to respond, Ehom is going to have to maybe. Uh, Earthshaker right now, he kind of has to, he's not even really in front of everything. If we saw the last engagement, he was like, he was still behind one hero, but it doesn't matter, like YYF just ulted over him and got the kill. Uh, by the way, if we're looking up top, they're doing a push on this lane. But he's going to have to pick up his dagger fairly soon, so he can really just stand, like, you know, go stand in this fountain and wait for the engagement to happen. Just stand as far back as you need to, just so that you do not get picked off by the Storm Spirit, because Earthshaker is going to be everything in these team battles. And if he gets taken out before he can cast a spell, like like what happened last time, um, Ehome's not going to stand a chance. And definitely, yeah, I totally agree with that. And if you were wondering about what I meant by positioning here, if you if you look at that top tower and how quickly that dropped down compared to the mid tower and how slowly it was dropped down, it was all positioning. Venomancer was there, a sniper was there, like the whole squad was there. One thing about positioning is that you have to really get to your tower before the team fight even begins. A lot of times, in a lot of other, like, I guess, game I watch, I see teams reacting too slowly and the tower just falls down extremely quickly. There was a good comparison to the top tower to the mid tower. The mid tower survived at least two push from, uh, from the Sentinel, and, and now the top tower just went down really quickly. It really comes down to positioning. But looking at some of the item choices from the Sentinel, we do see a pipe finish on the Necrolite. We do see ZSMJ legendary farm, 174 creep kills, 30 minutes in. Keep in mind that he's not AFK farming. The, the, he was pushing for the, at least the second half of the game. He does have a hex finish as well. We do see a uh, ultimate orb. I, I gotta guess that's a hex. And I don't know. I'm not too sure whether that a uh, that voice tone is gonna be a... Uh, on the Lina, at least. I'm not too sure whether that is the Eel Scepter. They might get very ambitious and go for Hex as well. That is a tall order as well, though. Uh, Vol'jin does have a, a gem, and that, that is a really signature move of Chinese plays. Uh, Chinese playing style wanting to shut down map control. So, really, everything is going right for LGD, and unless they make a huge blunder, I think they could win this game fairly, fairly quickly. So, also, when we're looking at the items, um, I'm kind of wondering, YYF doesn't seem to have... Oh, he does have 2,400 in the bank. Because I was, I was wondering why he was so item deficient compared to, you know, like, ZSMJ, who has, like, you know, only one hero kill. Actually, how many does... Actually, only two for YYF, so... Um, I, I guess the hero kills are fairly well spread amongst LGD. And that's actually pretty good if you think about it when it comes to... Uh, especially on a team like theirs, they don't really have a hero that you want to have, like... You know, you don't have, like, a, a Phantom Lancer who, 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 if you could you'd give him, like, 100% of your gold. But, like... So it's actually, I think, pretty good that they each are spreading out their gold very well. And if you think about it, they're going to both... We have one Gwen and we're going to be arriving at another pretty soon. Actually, I'm assuming that um, Storm Spirit was saving up for that Mystic Staff. Does he have one? He, he might almost. He's, he's at, probably um, saving up for it right now, yeah. Yeah, he's, yeah, he's at... 20, he just hit 2,700 gold, like, a split second ago. Um, so... Man, two sheep sticks thrown into the mix there with another cyclone. That's like adding three disables to your team. That's gonna be so pivotal. Um, I mean, imagine like oh, actually we do have a BKB on Nevermore, so they're never gonna be able to cyclone him. And we see a sheep right now in engagement on the Ventral Spirit, and we get actually a, they're focusing the Ventral Spirit and the Earthshaker at the same time, and it's huge. They still haven't picked any. Uh, well, now they take them all out, and wow, this is looking huge for them. Uh, Venomancer basically takes the brunt of the entire Witch Doctor ult. We also have Nevermore. He's kind of like wondering where everybody is. Uh, his ult was very effective, though. And actually, that was a fairly even exchange. We get Was it two down for each? No. Yeah, it was two down for each, wasn't it? It was two down for each, but critically, they lost the Visage. They lost the uh, ZSMJ, uh, the Necrolite, and that's huge. I gotta say, that wasn't the most perfect initiation from LGD. Storm had the correct idea. He went in for the Earthshaker, uh, but the only team support he got there was a single uh, luminous screen light thingy from the Visage, and that was not enough. They got it really picked off. They have to pick off the Earthshaker before he does anything. Earthshaker had enough time to throw off a Fisher on everyone, and that allowed... Uh, they were stunned, and, and Earthshaker, uh, not Earthshaker, the Shadow Fiend just kind of, you know, finished from there. He got his ultimate off, and the, the damage was just too much. Venomancer had his ultimate on as well. So I gotta say, because they didn't pick off a single hero, and that was a team fight. So you gotta, you gotta really keep, keep in mind that every single hero in Dota has a huge effect in the game, and we just saw a prime example of Earthshaker just changing the tide of the battle right there, even dying. That's true. And uh, we do have to actually make a, a note of item choices. Sniper is going glass cannon build. I think he's actually really going to be forcing 
um, LGDS TTY, they're going to be forcing them to target him because uh, I think Sniper's going to have. Er, right now, they've been going for Earthshaker first, and, and that is a good idea. But if you can just pop your BKB and go in for. You know, your BKB going for Earthshaker is not going to help you too much if you have. Um, a sniper with an MKB and Manta style smacking you. They really are gonna. They cannot let sniper wait in the back and take you out. And if you think about it, that's why Ehome picked sniper. He he's they pick him and they're not giving him these defensive items because they're instead hoping that the positioning and his range is what's gonna be the the defensive the replacement for these defensive items. You know. And I yeah, I definitely really love the sniper build. It's definitely one of those go big or go home kind of thing. You don't you don't want to pussy out. This is like. Oh, oops, that, that's very inappropriate. But anyways, um, what I want to say is that we do see a lot of snipers in the past going for things like BKB. They go, like, you know, I don't. I think I saw a Vanguard sniper as well. They go too much defensive items, and that's not the hero you want to pick. If you want to pick a sniper, you got to... He's, he's go big or go home, and I, I, I like that E-Home is, is really going big. And uh, definitely, it's exactly what you say. You got you want them to force the aggression on the sniper, they, but they can't. The sniper is really well positioned. Look at him right now. He's just like hiding behind everyone. There's a lot of a hero movement on this Roshan area. And I gotta say, these guys are farming like beasts. It's it's 33 minutes in, but they have to farm of like, you know, 40 to 50 minutes. If, that, if you look at Sniper, Manta into... Uh, MKB he has really great farm and those birds are helping his farm even if, even more as they suicide in yeah he's up to what is he now I'm actually really curious wow he's at 2400 he's gonna go pick up he's gonna go finish his item he's gonna right kill now. that bird oh, oh. it's another extra gold extra gold wow that's his birthday or something he's he on his birthday he became the monkey king whatever that means like who the hell named it the monkey king bar anyway um he's now the monkey king and he got a bird for his birthday so Meanwhile, we got all of E home. They're heading towards mid. Um, they should be pretty happy with themselves right now. Maybe uh, you still you just still can't get overconfident. You know, sniper even trekking a little bit forward like this, he's got to be careful. Uh, this is although this is the perfect scenario where you want a ventral spirit on your team because even if he missteps, even if he does get picked off by the storm spirit and they start to focus him, um, if you if ventral spirit is aware, she will be able to basically save his life and. Um, a key swap would actually completely change the tide of battle. So uh, this next team fight is going to be really critical. Um, you know, one small mistake uh, will be every will mean everything. So and and totally uh, not having anything to do with about this game. The Monkey King is actually from a uh, Chinese folklore uh, called Journey to the West, which yeah, that's a oh. direct translation. And uh, the the main I guess heroine in in that in that uh, I guess uh, folklore or whatever is a a monkey. And his uh, his item is a, a a pole, a big bar. So I guess oh. that's where it got a monkey king bar. One thing I really like about Dota is that I'm not too sure what an ice rock has done a lot of a of it. But uh, if you look at some of the old heroes, um, they have really cool like hero names and the items. Like they always come from everywhere. I think there's an item from Diablo. I think the Bereza is from Diablo too, right? Oh, really? And then uh, like it, it's really crazy. Like you know, of course Zeus is from you know the Greek myth. Uh, I don't even know. Like, there's a lot of these crazy things, and I I really like Dota for that. Like, it's it's really, I don't know. Yeah, it feels cool. I agree. And you know, I I don't know too much about copyright issues and stuff, but I'm hoping that a lot of whatever their names, their naming schemes and stuff, they can carry over uh, when they make Dota 2, which is going to be coming out next year, right? So, um, yeah. I I wonder. Yeah, we could, I mean, know, we could definitely talk about Dota 2. This game looks like it's going to be uh, going into a little bit of farming stage. Even yep. even if they're like. Right now, they seemingly they're kind of farming, but if we let up for a single second, we're gonna miss a storm spirit going in. So yeah. we we gotta we gotta pay close attention as well. Yeah. yeah, storm spirit is like a commentator's worst nightmare, to be honest. Like, like you know, you're you could be watching it could look like you know entire teams are separate from each other, and then like you blink and storm spirit's killed somebody, and then you know like you fucked up basically. Like so, storm spirit really makes you stay on your toes. He's you know. Anyway, that's, that, all, that's that, all I have to say. That about totally it. reminded me of a commentary we watched in DCCC, where yeah. this commentator was a great commentator. He was uh, giving really great analysis, but he had trouble keeping up with uh, a storm spirit. And every time, like storm spirit got a kill, he would be like, "Fuck!" 
Like you, you, you could just hear his disappointment in missing another kill, because yeah. you know, I, I, yeah, Stormster is just a hard hero to to follow up, and we see both teams are like team farming, like, like you know, roaming the map together, and yeah. really, it, this is it's just a kind of Chinese positioning, and I hope they don't do that, do this for like eighty more minutes. Yeah, but, hopefully. Uh, yeah. <laughs> hopefully, um, I mean, if you think about it, basically, I, I actually really think that SGTY should make a uh, do something pretty soon because. Um, they've got their, they have their two sheep sticks, they've got their cyclone, uh, they've got their beaky tanky items, and, um, I guess that's what's kind of rough when you're going up against, like, a team with good, like, when you have, like, an Earthshaker especially, he's just such a pivotal role in these big team fights, so maybe they're afraid of going into a 5-on-5 five five fight, but I, I actually think that the late game does favor, um, Ehome, so if they just keep trading farm or whatever, the sniper is gonna get way too farmed. And the magic damage, I mean, you think about it, Storm Spirit, his magic damage is pretty capped. Um, and he does about as much disable as he's ever going to do for the rest of the game. So, uh, wow, we do, uh -oh. see a, we do see a swap, and CH gets caught up, and he actually goes down, and maybe this is the one mistake that we're talking about. Uh, we got a double that damage and Nevermore. And they're going to be able to push it on this tower and maybe go further. Look at this. Um, man, they really needed... The, uh, Visage for this upcoming battle. Does he have enough to buy back? We do not know. We, we're seeing some teleports in, and you got to be a little bit concerned right now for SGTY. Uh, we're getting a teleport back from YYF as, as well, but they're going to be a little bit slow, and actually a lot of damage is going to be taken to the tower. They do pop. They pop the tower protection fairly early. Uh, Mant is going up, but what's also pivotally. Uh, King J is gonna is able to put up a lot of uh, wards in the meantime. There goes Storm Spirit. He BKB's in the middle of everything, and they do in fact go for a sniper first. And and a perfect Lena does pick him off, and that's exactly what they needed to do, um, making them survive a little bit longer. But wow, ZSMJ is so weak. He's going down. Um, and they're actually going to be losing this tower. Lena's going to go down as well, and we get a buyback. And uh, Necrolite, I think, is buying back, and she's coming in. And that was a, they really needed to do that buyback. Urshaker is going to end up going down. Are they going to also take out Burning as well? They are going to take out yeah, Burning, so perfect buybacks. Yeah, that's perfect buyback. If you notice, Sniper bought back as well, but unfortunately he did not have any uh, means of coming to join the fight here. The, the Shadow Fiend, knowing that he's going to die, is going to farm a couple more neutral creeps, uh, or <laughs> range creeps. I thought he was going to hit that range racks a couple more times, but whatever. Um, I, I Yeah, so it, that was a really great team fight for the uh, Scourge, actually picking off, uh, picking off the Visage and the Witch Doctor to follow. They were able to force a, a disadvantageous team fight from... Uh, LGD and even so they they actually LGD actually did okay but they lost a lot of item advantage because they had to they were forced to buy back many times there I think like three or four hero bought back in that team fight it's true yeah so and and they did take out that mid tower so one more mistake wow that just shows how one mistake can really kill you uh, when we saw CH uh, stepping forward enough getting swapped I mean if you think about it CH was all alone, and all five heroes for Ehome were pushing up on that middle tower, and he was in range to get swapped. So uh, you that, really got to walk on eggshells. Yeah, yeah, you got you got to walk on eggshells, or else. And and that really was the cause for. I mean, they basically traded hero kills, and in fact, probably gold, more gold lost from um, LGD than from Ehome just due to the buybacks. And they took out the middle tower. So uh, if, if you think about it, huge penalty to pay. Uh, for just you know for this one little, mistake, little mistake definitely. which just just the like, domino effect out of and really added up so no more of that yeah Slap so far we wrist. haven't seen uh ehome made any kind of i don't think they even made a single mistake yet they i mean it's it definitely doesn't seem like they're playing perfect dota because they do have a, a more of a late game squad and they really got row early game but also if you look at their item choices they're making the perf i gotta say they're making perfect item choices both of the Blink heroes are not getting blink at all. Earthshaker for going the blink. Look at his item. He's going as tanky as they want. Making it's like it's he's saying to the storm star, yeah, you can go on me, but you're not gonna kill me before I draw my fisher. You're not gonna kill me before I ult. And of course, we do see uh, the shadow fiend skipping his blink as well. We do see initiation going to Venomaster. Venomaster is gonna big pick off, but critically he uses ultimate. That is the tanking power. Sniper is gonna pick off the storm spirit, and I think another team fight is gonna be won from Ehome. LG, uh, the DSMJ is going to get focused, not too, not the best Requiem of Soul, but regardless, they do pick off the Necrolite, and uh, looks like that's it. So that's another huge team fight from Ehom. The the tanking item for the Venomancer, for the Earthshaker, everything else, they are really winning that team fight. Shadow Fiend does have a Satanic as well. How often do you see a 42-minute Shadow Fiend with a Satanic? These are very smart item choices.
Yeah, I agree. They've really bulked up on the health, and I was I was going to comment on that too. I think the Vip Booster is actually an excellent choice over the Blink Dagger.